Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at economic value added, also known as EVA. Economic value added is a different form of something that we learned about prior, which is called residual value or RI. So it's very important if you don't understand what residual value is, it's, it's beneficial if you go to the prior recording and view it. Otherwise, I'm going to be explaining residual value very briefly before we start. Also, before we start, I would like to remind you that if you are an accounting student, or especially if you are a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website. If you're a CPA candidate and you're taking a CPA course, such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Glime, I don't replace those courses. What I can be is I can be a useful addition, like a supplement, like a vitamin to your studies. And I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA score by helping you understand the material better. I teach you the material from scratch in contrast to your CPA review course. So here's my offer to you. Are you willing to risk $30 to try it for a month to find out whether my website and my resources can help you improve your performance on the CPA exam? If not for anything, check out my website to find out how well is your university doing on the CPA exam. I have score by university as well as section. I do also have other accounting, finance, tax, and audit courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Check out my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this video on YouTube and share it. It doesn't cost you anything. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So when we spoke about residual income, one of the disadvantages of residual income was that the required rate of return might be chosen unreasonably or it's a wishful rate or arbitrarily. So the required rate of return could be too high. And as a result, managers might make the wrong decision by not selecting certain project. Why? Because the company set up this required rate of return too high. So economic value added is a different form of residual income. Basically, it's the computation is basically the same. We're going to be using different terms, but it's a remedy to this problem, to this high required rate of return. So it's a remedy for this unrealistic required rate of return. So how do we compute residual income? Simply put, we take after tax income, then we compare after tax income, the, the difference between after tax income and the required rate of return times the divisional asset. So if our after tax income is 10,000, and this whole parentheses happens to be 8,000, well, we have 2,000 of residual income. And this is based on the required rate of return. So simply put, to be more specific, I'm assuming here we have 80,000 of division assets and the required rate of return is 10%, gives us 8,000. So that's basically residual income. What's gonna happen is when we, when you, when we compute economic value added, the same concept with slight adjustments. So rather than using after tax income, we're going to be using adjusted. We're going to make some adjustments to income. Rather than using the required rate of return or, or, or the herder rate, we're going to be using something called WAC, weighted average cost of capital. I'm going to be defining those in a moment. And we're going to multiply by not the division's asset, it's the adjusted invested asset. We're going to start with the division asset, then we're going to make small adjustments. Simply put, we're going to make an adjustment to income, an adjustment to the required rate of return, and an adjustment to division asset to find out what EVA is, the economic value added. Simply put, basically the idea, it's the same thing as residu residual income. Okay, so what do we, what type of adjustments do we make to income? Well, we're going to eliminate what we called, in quote, accounting distortion, like what? For research and development, what we do for research and development gap, when we have research and development, we expense research and development. We assume they have no future benefit, therefore they get expensed. If we have any research and development, what we do is we don't treat them as an expense. We treat research and development for the purpose of EVA as assets. Then we depreciate them little by little, but initially what's gonna happen is what we expense, it's going to come back and increase our net income because we're going to be removing the expense and moving it to the balance sheet. Then we're going to expense a little bit of it, but initially it's going to increase our inc income. Same thing with advertising. When you advertise for gap purposes, you expense. And what's going to happen is we're not going to expense it. We're going to take, we're going to take this advertising and add it back to remove it from expense, which means adding to our income, then we're going to amortize it in pieces over, over the life. So this is these are the basic adjustments for the income. For invested assets, if we have any current liabilities, we'll deduct 
the current liabilities from invested asset. And we have to compute what we call WAC, the weighted average cost of capital. Remember, the required rate of return, that's basically, that's the hurdle rate. That's basically, the company can set that rate. Now, we're not going to go with that. We're going to go based on the actual form capital structure. Basically, we're going to look at our debt. We're going to look at our equity. How are we financed? Then we're going to find out how much does it actually cost us, cost us in terms of, in terms of capital capital structure between that and equity. So the best way to, let's illustrate WAC first because, you know, it has some computation. Now in a managerial accounting or a cost accounting course, you rarely have to compute WAC, the weighted average cost of capital. But I'm, nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we compute the weighted average cost of capital. Usually it will be given to you. But let's assume a company is financed through the following. They have notes, which is loans, they have bonds, which is loans, and they have common stock. And I made the number 6 million for a note. They have a loan for 6 million, 5%. They have bonds, also form of borrowing of 8 million, which is, uh, they're paying 6%, and 14 million in common stock. So 28 million is the total capital. And what we have to find first is the weight of each one. So the, first we compute the weight. How much does the note represent of the total capital structure. If we take 6 divided by 28 or 6 million divided by 28 million, 21.5. We'll do the same thing for the bonds. 8 divided by 28, which is 28.5. And for the common stock, 14 divided by 25. Our tax rate for the purpose of this example is 20%. Then what we do is we find, we're going to take the weight. Notice, we, first we compute the weight. This is the weight for the note. We're going to take the weight and multiply it by the interest rate, which is 5% on that loan. However, because it's a loan, we get a tax deduction. So what we do is we don't multiply it by 5%. We want to find out what is our net cost of debt. So the bank is charging us 5%. That's fine. That's fine. So let's assume we have $1,000 in, in a loan times 5%. We pay per year $50. Okay, that's the bad news. That's the bad news. We pay $50. The good news is when we, when we are computing our income minus expenses, what's going to happen? We're going to deduct this $50. Well, if we deduct this $50, this, this is going to reduce our taxes by $50 times the tax rate. The tax rate is 0.2, which is $10. So simply put, we paid $50 to the bank. As a result of this, we saved $10 on our taxes. So what is our net tax? Minus 50 plus 10. So we end up paying net of tax $40. 40 divided by 1,000, really our net rate is 4%. So I showed you the math. Now, how do you compute this automatically? You will take your bank rate, which is 5%. You multiply it by one minus the tax rate. So this is 0.2 is the tax rate. So simply put, you are being charged 5%, but you're going to save 20% on the amount that you that you spend on interest, which is $50. So simply put, your rate, it's going to be your tax rate times 1 minus the tax rate, which is 0 0.8. Your net cost for the debt is 0 0.4 or 0 0.04, not 0 0.4, 0 0.04 or 4%. So the net cost is only 4%. Simply put, to go from the interest cost to the net cost, you'll take the interest cost, which is 5%, you multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate, whatever that tax rate could be 0.4, could be 0.3, could be 25, it doesn't matter, 1 minus the tax rate, you'll get the net cost. So we have to do this for the notes. We also have to do this for the bonds, because at bonds, we have to pay interest on the bonds, same concept. The bonds weight, 20. Uh, the weight of the bond is 28.5%. We multiply this by 6%, times one minus the tax rate. Again, the bonds, we have to pay interest on the bond, which is basically taking 6% multiplied by 0.8, which is the net cost is 0.48. So although we're paying 6% with the tax savings, we end up paying 4.8%. Uh, now for the stocks, you don't get a tax deduction. You have 50% coming from the stocks multiplied by 12%. Notice you don't have any tax deduction because when you pay dividend, you don't get it tax deduction. Dividend is, is not an expense, therefore it's 0 0.06. Now you add up all of them, you add up 
this, this, and this. So your weighted average cost of capital is 8.16. So this way, managers don't have, don't receive uh, a required rate of return that's arbitrary. We use the WAC, and the WAC is based on an, uh, on on our actual financing, which is 8.16. The best way to illustrate this is to work a quick example. But again, just don't worry about the WAG that much. Just know what it is, how it's computed. But in a managerial accounting course or a cost accounting, you don't have to do it. Okay, let's take a look at this example. We have Universal Electronics, which started operation a year ago, has two divisions, a consumer division and a commercial division. Both divisions are heavily invested in research and development, which is assumed to generate benefit for five years. R&D spending is made uniformly throughout the year. It means they, let's assume they spend, for example, $1,000. It means divide that by 12 and they spend one twelfth of it every month. Universal Electronics has a cost of capital of 11%. That's their cost of capital. Selected, which is cost of capital is the same thing as WAC. It just simply here, cost of capital, it's already computed for you. Selected financial statements are as follow. Compute e EVA or compute economic value added for this company. Now, again, what do we have to do? Well, let's start with the formula. What's the formula? Well, we have to take adjusted income, which is we don't know what adjusted income. We have divisional income. We're going to take adjusted income divided by adjusted investment. So simply put, we're going to look at adjusted income and we're going to divide by let's just let's put adjusted investment here adjusted assets or adjusted investments which is the assets okay we're going to take those two numbers divide them by each other and that's going to give us once you divide them that's going to give us economic value added now we have to compute adjusted income for the consumer division well we are starting with the, they're telling us our income is 3850 remember this is this is accounting income this is accounting income what do we have to do well simply put when to get to this 3850 to get to this 3850 at some point we deducted a thousand dollar in R&D notice there's a thousand dollar of R&D research and development so we deducted one thousand dollar in R&D to get to this divisional income to get to this division whoops to get to this divisional income so what do we have to do now we that that 1000 in r and d we have to add it back because under eva we don't expense r and d we're going to we're going to add it back to assets make it as an asset and we're going to expense it over the life of the project so simply put so we're going to start 3850 and we're going to add to it 1000 that's fine okay then guess what then we have to deduct the depreciate the amortization for this R and D because remember R and D get amortized just like depreciation it gets depreciated. Now you might saying okay then I'll have to deduct two hundred because over five years they're telling us here that they spend the money uniformly throughout the year. It does not mean that they spend a thousand dollar right from the get go. They spend it evenly. It means on average they had a five hundred dollar expense in R and D on average. Therefore, you will take 500 divided by 5, and for the first year, you will deduct $100 for the R&D. Therefore, all in all, the adjusted income, the adjusted income for the consumer division is 4,750. So notice we added back the full R&D, then we deducted $100. Simply put, we added back 90% of the R&D. Now, for the adjusted investments, we are starting with how much? We are starting with 27,500, 27,500. Remember, we have to deduct current liabilities. We have to deduct this $1,000 current liabilities gets deducted. Then remember, since we did not expense $900, remember, we initially we expensed 1,000. Then we took this 1,000, turn it back into a non-expense, then deducted one and turn it turn only $100 of it into an expense. Now, this the difference here, this $900 has to go somewhere. This is no longer an expense. If it's no longer an expense, it's added to our asset because now this R&D is capitalized. And now I have my adjusted capital, which is, if we do the computation, it's $27,400. $27,400. So now we can com compute 
economic value added. How do we compute economic value added? Well, we look at our adjusted income, which is 4,750, and we're going to subtract from it 27,400 times, which is 11%. Our WAC is 11%. Okay. And when we take the difference between those two, we're going to come up to 1,736. So this is the economic value added. It's adjusted income minus the adjusted asset or the adjusted invested asset multiplied by the WAC. And we can do the same thing for the commercial for the commercial division. First, we start with the divisional income, which is 3,880. Same concept. We're going to add, simply put, we're going to add 1,000, then deduct 100. So simply put, we're going to add 900 here. Then with the divisional asset, we're going to start with this, deduct 800, then add then add 900 because whatever we we did not expense, this 900 goes into the asset and we compute the, and if you want to verify this yourself, the answer should be 1,721.50 if you want to verify to, to do this computation yourself. So this is how we compute economic value added. If you have any questions or any comments, please let me know. Again, at the end of this recording, I'm going to ask you to like this recording, share it. If you're studying for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website. The CPA exam is a 30 to 40 year investment in your career. Don't take it lightly. Put the exam behind you. Study hard. Stay safe and good luck.